Our minds are truly remarkable. They enable us to learn, adapt, and grow throughout our lives. They have the incredible ability to process vast amounts of information, solve complex problems, and create innovative solutions. They have a remarkable capacity for creativity, allowing us to imagine, invent, and express ourselves in endless ways. If you think about it, the potential of the human mind is virtually limitless. Now, though our minds possess a phenomenal capacity for growth and development, they can also be profoundly hindered from developing. The thing is, our minds also serve as the conduit for God's communication with us. It is the channel by which we comprehend His requirements. Now, Satan, ever aware of this, constantly works to corrupt any function of the body or mind. And he has perfected strategies for this, the most effective one being the perversion of our appetites. Most people are not prepared to use drugs like cocaine or heroin, which can rapidly impair brain function. But everyone does enjoy a wholesome meal, and Satan takes advantage of this. He knows that one of the strongest temptations we have to meet is upon the point of appetite, and giving us a taste for the things that are degrading our mental and moral powers will weaken and that ensures that he gains the victory over us. Now what I'm about to share with you right now is not only from a religious or spiritual perspective. Science shows that there is a relationship between what we eat and the way we think. Many of us know that eating healthy foods like fruits, vegetables, nuts and grains can boost brain power. Too much junk food on the other hand can harm your memory, your mood and even make you lazy because it lacks the nutrients needed for optimal brain function. And this can have a negative effect upon your cognitive abilities, such as your concentration, memory, and problem-solving skills. Now, God who knows all things explicitly tells us in the Bible which animals we are permitted and forbidden to eat by specifying them as clean and unclean in Leviticus 11. One of the animals listed in the chapter as unclean is pork. Now, let me show you what Satan has done. According to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, pork is the most widely eaten meat in the entire world, followed by poultry and beef, of course. God never created the pig to be eaten under any circumstances. It is impossible for the flesh of any living creature to be healthy when filth is its natural element and when it feeds on every detestable thing. So who in the world is behind this? Pork is known for causing a host of diseases, including multiple sclerosis, which is a long-lasting condition where the body's immune system attacks the brain, the spinal cords, and the nerves. This in turn hinders communication between the brain and the rest of the body, leading to various issues like tiredness, weak muscles, tingling sensations, balance problems, and trouble seeing or thinking clearly. God knew what he was talking about when he warned us not to eat it. Now Satan also drives us to the other extreme, and that is overindulgence or gluttony, which is just as much a violation of the laws that govern our health as eating unclean meat is, and this contributes significantly to the following statistics. In the year 2000, it is said that 14 million people around the world died of heart disease. The number of deaths in 2009 for the same cause rose to a staggering 18 million. In 2020, nearly 10 million people died of cancer, and millions continue to suffer under diabetes and kidney disease due to diabetes. According to the World Health Organization, among the top 10 diseases that kill millions of people each year, heart disease is at number 1, stroke at number 2, cancer at number 6, and diabetes at number 9. Now God also told us in Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26, that if we obey his commandments, he wouldn't allow any of the diseases that he brought upon the Egyptians to fall upon us. In 2010, scientists from the University of Manchester conducted studies on mummies using modern medical techniques like CT scans and tissue analysis. And they discovered that ancient Egyptians died of the very same diseases that many people are dying of today. And all of these diseases can be attributed to one's lifestyle. Due to the recent spike in fast foods and processed foods, most people's diets consist of foods that are high in saturated fats, cholesterol and added sugars, which is the recipe for heart disease. We are slowly eating ourselves to death, clogging our minds in the process, and God cannot get through to us. 
Eating and drinking are blessings from the Lord, but when it is done irresponsibly and carried to such excess, it becomes a curse. People are living to eat when they should be eating to live. As a result, they are dying physically and spiritually. In the days of Noah, people prioritized gratifying their senses with whatever they desired, and this ultimately led to the moral declension that called down the judgments of God. After the flood, people once again turned away from God and became corrupt, like the people of Sodom and Gomorrah who fell due to the indulgence of unnatural desires as a result of intemperance, by the way. And then there was Esau, who had a strong desire for a particular article of food, eventually trading away his inheritance for a single meal. And what about the Israelites, who were freed from Egypt? When they came out of captivity, God provided them with bread and water. But they desired the flesh pots of Egypt, and were resolved to return to their captors, preferring slavery and even death over abstinence from meat. God eventually granted their request for flesh, and their gluttony led to a plague that caused many of them to die. And consider Babylon, one of the greatest kingdoms in antiquity. The downfall of this mighty empire can be attributed only to gluttony and drunkenness. With each generation, crime and disease have risen. Intemperance in eating and drinking and indulging base desires has dulled humanity's noble faculties. Reason has become a slave to the appetite. And what is the result of gratifying the taste? Frail, weak, diseased bodies with which no man can glorify God. The primary purpose of humanity is not simply to satisfy depraved appetites. It is important for us to meet our physical needs, but we shouldn't allow ourselves to be controlled by appetite. Those who are striving to become holy, who desire to be with Jesus for eternity and join the company of heavenly beings, are bidden to practice temperance in all aspects of life. Our bodies must be living sacrifices, just as the offerings in ancient times were to be unblemished. Taking good care of our bodies is a spiritual act of worship. Paul outlines this in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 20. He writes, For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. God is as much interested in our physical and mental well-being as He is in our spiritual well-being. Whatever God has committed to us, He expects returns and He desires that we value ourselves according to the price He has paid for us. Our first duty toward God and our fellow beings is that of self-development. Every faculty with which God has endowed us should be cultivated to the highest degree of perfection, that we may be able to do the greatest amount of good which we are capable of. Adam fell due to indulging in appetite, but Christ overcame temptation by denying it. Our hope of returning to Eden lies in firm self-control. And it is not impossible for us to overcome depraved appetites. God is able to give us the victory. Let us not allow Satan to make us feel as if it's too much of an expense to give up our pleasures. It can cost us a lot more if we continue in them. Our health and even our salvation is on the line. We are God's purchased possession and we must value ourselves accordingly. Despite the formidable struggle, you can overcome anything, whether it be drugs, sinful pleasures, or overindulgence of things that harm your body, whatever it may be, with the help of divine power, you can have the victory, and you will ultimately receive the victor's crown in God's kingdom.